we found a really interesting story along a little salmon stream on the coast of Alaska. This is on Baranoff Island in southeast Alaska. Now if we look here, there's a bunch of salmon right down in here. Males and females. And they're in here for spawning. You often think about salmon coming into the big rivers. But you know we forget that salmon spawn oftentimes in little bitty creeks like this one or in the tiny little tributaries and streams, thousands and thousands of little stretches of water all along the coast where salmon spawn. We've got a classic little story here. Here's the fish. And look up here on the bank. There's fish carcasses up there. And here on the on this little sandbar, gravel bar, by the edge of the stream, here's a salmon laying here, but there's something interesting about it. It's got some holes punched in it, right into the side. Hole there, hole there. Come on along here, I'll show you some other stuff. Here's a little stream running up in. More salmon carcasses. This one right here tells you a classic thing about what is causing these carcasses to move up. The brain is bitten out right on the top of that salmon head. What does that? Bear. This is a place where brown bears live and they've been in here fishing for salmon and left the unmistakable signs of their presence. Look at here. Look how this moss is worn and dark here. A little bit of a bear trail coming down to the stream. And then right here, here we go again. Lots more evidence. Here's a bear's dining table here. Here's another fish. If you looked at this side, you'd think, how did it get up here? Well, there's a tooth puncture mark right there. And over here, part of the belly bitten out. Bears love to eat salmon bellies and they love to eat salmon brains. And look at these other parts. A salmon head here, brain bitten out of it. And here's another unmistakable sign of bear. There's a big kind of a puddle of gray droppings here from the bear. And that certainly tells you who's been here. More fish stuff. Come on up here, I'll show you some more stuff. Big skunk cabbage here. Another salmon carcass down in there. And look at this bear trail we're on here. More salmon remains. Head and tail. Bear has bitten the brain out of that one. Here's another little pile of bear droppings or bear scat. Little puddle of that gray stuff there. If they'd been eating berries, then we'd have purple berry parts in here, but no, that's salmon. Look, here's another salmon carcass. Going deeper into the forest. We keep following these tracks in, and there's salmon remains everywhere we go. Come on over here, I'll show you some more stuff. Another little pile of salmon remains right here. Just part of the head. And even all the way back in here. Here's another salmon head. Again, the brain is missing. Carcass apparently has all been eaten. So what we see is the kind of sign that bears leave when they're working along a salmon stream, but there's a huge story wrapped up around this. What's happening? These salmon, these are pink salmon carcasses. They were born here in this same little stream. They went maybe a thousand miles out into the ocean to grow into adults. And they come back here into the stream to lay their eggs and start the next generation. But another thing happens. The salmon are like packets of nutrients from the far reaches of the ocean coming into the land and the forests of Alaska. 
each of these imagined over thousands and thousands of years. The bear is coming in here, moving salmon from the streams off into the forest. The eagles, the gulls, eating, dropping bits and pieces, leaving their droppings, the stellar jays, the mink, the otters, all moving salmon nutrients into the forest. Imagine that happening over thousands and thousands of years. And the result is the salmon are fertilizing not only the streams with their own dead bodies, but also the forests. So these bits of salmon bringing nutrients in here for the shrubs like this menzesia, the blueberry bushes here, the huckleberry, and all the way up into the tops of trees, 100 and 150 feet high. The researchers who study these nutrients find that there's particles that come all the way from the ocean, these little bits of nutrition, all the way up in the tops of these trees. So this is a salmon forest. And there's a beautiful reciprocity here. That the salmon are helping to nourish these forests. And the forests, in turn, are creating the conditions that the salmon need in order to survive. Filtering the water that go into the stream so that it's pure. Shading the streams so that the water stays cool. Dropping into the streams and creating the quiet pools that the salmon need. So the forest and the salmon are parts of each other. Neither can fully exist without the other one being there. This is why it's so important that we take care of the forests along the rivers and that we take care of the rivers themselves so that this rich resource of salmon that feeds people, that sustains the economies of communities in Alaska, so that this rich and amazing and beautiful resource will continue to exist. And this beautiful forest and these glorious swarms of salmon can bring us nothing but joy as we witness the brilliant cycle of life going on here. I'm gonna wander off and look around for some more of these salmon bits farther back into the forest.